told you that. Um, this is kind of what I'm thinking about for relocating our existing breaker panel over here to the nav station. Uh, something kind of similar to this. Uh, I've got some black acrylic or ABS plastic, something like that. Uh, to go inside, i got to build a wood frame to frame this box area, this shelf area in. This will be closed off. That will become a door that will swing open. Uh, kind of like the way the TV swings. Or the computer monitor. The panel is uh, it's like 10 by 16, 10 by 15 and 3 quarters. And so that will take up this, this area over here off to the side. And it's about that tall. And then I'll have room for like a VHF radio and some other gauges and small switches and battery monitors and things like that. So I'm sketching it out. I'm going to go back to the shop and see how much teak I have left over from our bow pulpit project. And hopefully I have enough and don't have to run to McLeath and get more. Oh, we got a blue sea system. This is the, uh, this is just the schematic drawing with the dimensions on it, but it has digital ammeter, digital voltmeter. Uh, it's got, uh, I forget, there's switches go back and forth. It monitors three different, it'll monitor three different battery banks. So now I finally moved my computer from this area down underneath the nav table into these cabinets that I built. Uh, we opened up some dead space and installed some shelves and now all my crap up here is out of the way. And now we can move the panel and reroute all the electricity for the boat over here. Looking forward to it. and 12 volt DC panel, breaker panel. 18 DC positions and double breaker main with a neutral disconnect and six positions for AC breakers. This is gonna fit up in here. And now I just need to screw in place. So this is the inside of the breaker panel, and these are the, the little digital meters, and this is the DC main, and this just goes together, this just gets in with a little quick pin, and I have some uh, gauges, uh, I want to put a one of those Raymarine I think it's a i70 multi get function display right in there and maybe a couple of like bilge pump control and a couple other small things right there. So that is our new nav station. There, that's better. 
Let me turn the light off. William? Good morning. Today I'm going to be doing some work on the electrical panel, and I'm going to be installing some expansion breakers for the empty slots here in the in the panel. Try to talk this way. We went through our uh, we went through our uh, list of circuits, and it looks like we're going to actually probably pretty much fill up that panel. So anyway, that's what I'll be doing. So these are the breakers. Most of them are 15 amp breakers. We're sticking with the, the basic 15 amp. Most of the wiring we got is 14 gauge wiring, which is plenty for a 15 amp circuit. Except for our ElectroScan marine sanitation device, and that is a 50 amp breaker with number four wire. So I'm messing around the back of the panel here, taking off the screws and then putting in the breakers in the dead space. Trying not to get electrocuted on the AC hot bus bar. The back side of the panel, they include little expansion wires. These light up the LEDs that are on the breakers. So when the breakers are lit, you know the circuit's on. Uh, I think they change colors when the breakers trip. And I'm hooking up the uh, these little wires are for the LEDs. Each one goes to a breaker. Does it you light also up the back of the label? Yeah, it lights up the back of the label and it also lights up the... Uh, well, actually, this one, these wires light up the back of the label. These ones light up the LEDs that tell you when the circuit's oh, on. Oh, the actual lights. Yeah. Okay. This bank is full. I've got temporary labels on the ones that we... They didn't have specific labels that came with the Blue Sea Kit. It came with a. Uh, oh, we can't. Can you turn the light off? Came there with a pack go. of labels. And some of them are generic radar, refrigeration, GPS, etc. But some of them we've divided up differently, like the outlets on the port side of the boat and the starboard side, the strip lights that go over, or basically the side deck all these lights that go underneath the side decks. Navigation lights, uh, that's everything on the outside of the boat, green and reds, and the steaming and stern lights. Actually, the steaming light's different. Uh, anchor light's different. Tricolor at the masthead is different. Four deck light is different. So. What do you mean different? Different circuits. These are just basically the running lights. The green and the red forward, and then the stern light. Uh, on the back rail. What about our tricolor? Oh, you have tricolor. Tricolor, yeah. The masthead, that's a different switch because you can't run Doesn't. your running lights and your nav lights at the same time. And I've got this cool label maker that makes heat shrink labels. Let's take a look at that. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah so I'm wiring the, uh, the panel feed from the battery banks up to the 100 amp breaker and back here I've got to make power bus connectors to jump these two bus bars together. So the red wire goes up there, down the hole. Down the hole, through this through cabinet here. And it's going to end up in this nightmare of a battery box. So this is the current battery I'm box. I'm not sure where everything goes. Which is going to look different later. Yeah. Once I wire it for the new uh, fireflies. We'll have more batteries in the uh, bank also. This is called a uh, add a battery kit. It's basically an automatic charging relay that's when you switch to this, it'll let you turn the batteries off or on and it, the house bank is separate from the panel uh, or from the uh, start battery. Stop moving it so much, please. But when you when you uh, switch combined battery, uh, this relay automatically brings both of them together. And also when they're in the on position, the house bank is separate from the engine starting bank. But when something happens like the alternator kicks on or solar panel, it'll combine the batteries uh, in order to charge them. And then it'll break the charge if uh, 
one battery, say one battery is up to 13 and a half volts and one's down to seven, or I mean 12.7 or something like that, um, it'll combine them until they both reach the same and then it'll disconnect. Or if one battery's higher, it'll uh, shut that one off and only charge the battery that needs it. So Show the back too, because the back has some, it's different. Yeah, so the you can actually see the little picture here that shows how the batteries are combined or isolated depending on this, the the relay uh, charge state. So the ones we have now have two plus one, right? Yeah. This one actually does two yeah. both directions. So your panel is coming off of one or the other battery and then the starter battery is either on or off. This one, uh, this is battery two, this is battery one, so your typical house bank goes through this switch and then your starter bank also goes through this switch. And it makes a lot more sense and it also keeps the batteries separated unless you want to combine them manually with the switch. Uh, say you got a flat starting battery and you need to use your house batteries to uh, start the engine. Then you can switch it to combine and it'll run all the battery banks together and give you the most kick that you can get to turn the starter over. Okay, so I'm doing big, the big uh, panel feed cables and I was talking about the difference in the wire type, and I don't know if you can see this. Can you hold that up? Um, see how fine the uh, strands of copper wire are. Um, the terminals I'm using are these, they're called power lugs, and these are for one to two gauge wire. I'm using two gauge wire, so this is kind of, these work for both of them. The uh, difference in these types of cables, or the ty types of uh, these terminal ends, are, you can see here, if Jenny wants to tilt that down, those both are the, for the same size cable, that's for a number four cable, and that size hole, I think it's a quarter inch hole or something. The, uh, the amount of copper in there uh, is huge, I mean it makes a big difference in the connection, you get a better, less voltage drop across those terminals. Just leave them on the table. So I need to take this, figure out how much insulation to strip off. And these cable cutters, these bypass cable cutters, are really nice. They do a good clean cut at the ends of these, so you get a good square cut. Uh, if you use like diagonal cutters, like linesman's linesman's pliers, they will uh, kind of smash the wire rather than cut it, cut through it. And if you're careful, you can actually run this around in a circle without nicking strands. Isn't that cute? You can run this around and use it as a stripper. There's about 4,000 strands of wire in this here. Did you say big dummy? Yeah. Why are you all of a sudden so active? The cat's been sleeping all day. But the cool thing about these this crimper is it's got adjustable jaws. Each of these terminals is identified with a color as well as a letter designation, which stands for what type of crimp you use. You can see on the, uh, um, these are called power lug settings. I don't know if you can read this right there, but each one of those has a, a letter category on this handle here for power lugs. And the dies rotate and you open it up and you can swing this around till you get to the right letter that you're oh, hold it up a bit. looking for. So this one is supposed to be an HH for number two wire. And these crimpers, they won't release, you can't release the wire until you've actually finished the crimp, until it makes all the way um, completed. So this thing makes a kind of a pointy end on the end of the crimp. Hold it there where you can see it. And so you rotate it 90 degrees from the previous crimp. Crimp it again and it helps round off those corners for a smooth, a smoother edge. There's your completed crimp. 
Here it is. And then when you're done, slip this on the thing. That is. This is a uh, adhesive line sh heat shrink, and this just basically covers up and protects the joint between the wire and the terminal. And when you heat it, there's got a glue that melts and squeezes out. Now we've got us a totally waterproof connection between the wire and the terminal. This shrink has glue, you can see, if you look at it, oh, it's hot. It has glue that squeezes out. And that's that. Let me push this light through the hole. Can I get you to grab it? Yeah. Ow. So there's the yellow, and there's the red, all connected. Yep. And now he's doing... Uh, this is the bonding wire that goes... Keep back. This bonds the panel. This is number eight marine cable. It bonds the panel to the uh, all the through-hole fittings and the rest of the bonding wires that go through the boat to all the, uh, oh, the propeller shaft and the, uh, you know, the rudder flanges and whatever else through all fittings yeah that's what I was trying to say so here's a little update on what the what's going on with the uh, electrical project uh, we got the panel installed and I still need to flop over some of the DC wiring into this uh, into the new breaker locations um, some of the things one of the things I need to do is uh, we're looking at upgrading and improving our battery bank and it's sitting directly underneath me uh, in order to do that, I need to uh, cut out the old battery box. It's kind of weirdly framed in and fiberglassed in the in this area. So, in order to move these batteries to cut a new to build a new battery box, uh, my plan is to move them back here into the engine room temporarily, relocate them, and in order to have room to put them there, I need to get rid of the water heater. So, we're putting the water heater. We've got a different water heater that goes under the sink. It's one of those isotherm or isotemp round uh, kind of a cylinder thing. And there's a nice little spot underneath the sink to put it in. And uh, it's a four gallon. Uh, this one's six, but I don't think it really holds six because anytime we try and descale it, we can only put about three gallons of vinegar into it. But we're going to move the water heater under the sink. Then I'll have room to put the batteries here temporarily while I rebuild the box underneath me. And then we're looking at Firefly, uh, AGM, they're like a carbon foam core uh, AGM battery. And I think hopefully we can fit maybe four of them. Uh, they're about 100, and, I think they're 110 amp hours each. So hopefully we can fit four of them in here. And then maybe also a starting battery as well. And I'm not sure if we're gonna go with an AGM for starting or maybe something like an Optima. I don't know, I'm gonna do a little research, but I'd like to uh, maybe have a remote battery for the starter and then keep the house bank inside here. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how, what I have room for. But anyway, that's the update and keep you posted. And we'll put a link for the Firefly AGMs uh, in the description below. And give us a thumbs up if you like what you see. Thanks for watching.